Felicitous greetings, fellow fanatics. Greetings and salutations, I'm Ad the Fanatic, and today we're taking a look at Quest Calendars 2023 The Void Spark Chronicles, a day-by-day -day RPG by Sundial Games. I've played a little ahead for this review and have gone through the story up through the end of April. I will be avoiding spoilers, but something minor may slip through all the same. Before we begin, what sort of characters do you remember playing as in solo RPGs? Let me know in the comments down below, and then let's begin. Before we begin, it's important to note that I'm using the Copilot Kit. This comes with a physical copy of the calendar itself, the hero book, and a standard set of seven dice, including a D4, D6, D8, two D10s labeled for use together as a D100, a D12, and of course, a D20. For those wanting either cheaper or fancier options, Sundial offers everything from a digital PDF version of the calendar, as well as metal or hand-cut dice for those who like to have premium math rocks. You'll also need a pencil, and if you're using the Hero Book, a wet erase marker is recommended. For the first couple weeks of your journey, you'll be playing a tutorial of sorts, where you'll take on the role of the Autonomous Neural Drone Infrastructure, or Andy for short. Don't worry, you'll get a choice of characters soon enough. On the back of January 2nd, we'll have a character sheet we can use to keep track of Andy's stats. We're instructed to roll a d4 to determine the value of each trait. After that, we come to our first page that has real options. When you see a sequence listed with letters, that means you choose one and resolve it. The resolution for a page is always listed on the back of the previous day's page. In this case, since Andy has high intellect, I'll roll the d20 and add 4 to the result. Well, my year's off to a wonderful start, isn't it? After a second attempt which is much more favorable, it's time to arm up. When a page presents numbers like this, you must resolve all of them in order. The weapon set you choose determines Andy's attack bonus, which makes it easier to hit enemies, damage, which determines what you roll if you hit, and defense, which can sometimes reduce the amount of damage you take from enemies. We'll also get a couple single-use items in the form of a medkit and a solar grenade. And to no one's surprise, we have our first combat encounter shortly thereafter. When doing combat, you'll roll all dice before checking the results. In this case, we do two attack rolls and two damage rolls. For the attack rolls, it's important to remember to add the attack bonuses. So after rolling a d20 and a d8 twice, I record the results in these boxes and check the resolution. Again, this is always on the back of the previous page. We can see that Andy is not much of a fighter. Although I do manage to hit the second turret, it's not enough to destroy it, and both end up firing for a total of four damage. Most combat pages in Void Sparks consist of only a single round, so regardless of what happens with the turrets, you only do one set of rolls for them. In addition to battle, stats can, of course, modify your skill checks, and sometimes you'll have abilities which further add to them. In this case here, we're attempting to hack a computer, which relies on wisdom. Andy has three, but also has the computer's ability, which adds an additional two to the check. So we'll roll a die and get a 17 for a total of 22, succeeding with ease. Occasionally, you'll have what I like to call a map page. On these pages, you'll start at the X and be free to explore the various locations, moving from one room to another. You don't always have to visit everyone, but you never know what they'll contain. Perhaps supplies, maybe enemies, and sometimes even bonuses that will affect other pages. And the last thing the prologue will teach you about is ship combat. This plays out standard to normal combat, only you'll be using your ship's aim and evasion rather than your own attack and defense. There are no damage rolls in ship combat, you simply either hit or miss. For each of these, you'll roll a d100. If you strike your foe, they cannot counterattack. If you miss, then you may be able to evade some damage, though usually not all of it, if your evade roll is high enough. Whoever is left has to try to get through your shields. In the prologue, Andy will simply take damage whenever the ship is damaged, but once you get to the game proper, your ship has its own stat page where you'll keep track of how much health each individual station has. Whenever you take damage, you'll roll a d6 to determine where the ship is hit. If it reduces that compartment to zero, any upgrades are destroyed and any crew member there is killed, so take care to keep them in good repair. Additionally, if you take damage to a compartment that's already destroyed, you'll take damage directly to your character. Once you get past the prologue, your adventure begins proper, and you'll begin by choosing your character. Although rules are provided for making your own from scratch, the game has six recommended characters to choose from. If you don't have the hero book, you'll simply flip over the page for the chosen hero to find their character sheet. If you do have the book, you may want to use one of the provided sticker tabs to mark their page. In my case, I'll be playing as Jake Soren. It's a sci-fi RPG, so why wouldn't I want to play as a pilot? 
Each character has a little bit of backstory, though you're free to play their choices as you see fit throughout their adventure. Although as for myself, I'll be playing Jake as described, a stalwart that seeks to clear his besmirched family name. Although the prologue teaches you most of the game, there are a few things to note. Firstly is the possibility of death. Your character reaches 0 HP, they'll be replaced by a clone, but you'll take a major penalty in the process. Secondly, you have the weekly lottery. Every Sunday, you can choose to roll a d6 to gamble. On a 1 or 2, you'll lose money while anything else will win you a small sum. It's not much, but unlike real lotteries, you're statistically likely to gain an average of 1 credit each time, so that's about 50 credits over the course of the year. And speaking of ways to gain extra money, there's also the option of pickpocketing. On many pages, you'll find that a money bag symbol has been hidden. If you find it, you can pickpocket by rolling a d4. You gain credits equal to your roll, but on a 4, you also decrease your virtue by 1. In keeping with Jake's backstory, I completely ignored these for his adventure, but when I went back and played as the thieving smuggler, I took every opportunity I could find to pilfer. And of course, what RPG is complete without equipment? As the course of the game goes on, you'll be able to find all sorts of items. This includes a number of single-use items that can be consumed for various purposes, crew members you can hire and systems you can install to enhance your ship, and of course, equipment that you can wield to enhance your stats. If you've seen the hero book, you'll find stickers are included which you can use to keep track of these. And finally, there's the opportunity to level up. There are no experience points in quest calendars. Instead, you'll level up on pre-selected days. Using the hero book, simply flip your character over to the next page, transfer over whatever is needed, and increase two attributes, or a single attribute twice if you so desire. New abilities as well as enhancements to HP, defense, attack, and damage are already recorded. If you don't have the hero book, the back of the previous day's page will instruct you on what changes to make. Component-wise, the most important thing to talk about is the calendar itself. Like most page -a day style calendars, Voidspark Chronicles comes mounted on a plastic stand and you can tear off the pages one at a time to reveal the next day. The pages include both the real-world date and any holidays pertaining to such, as well as the in-game date. The artwork is pretty good and for most days is completely unique although I have noticed that they seem to repeat the same image for the helm from time to time. If you're getting the hero book, you'll notice that it's spiral bound and as aforementioned, includes a couple sticker sheets. The pages have a smooth coating so you can easily use a wet erase marker on them. A dry erase marker is not recommended as you'll be turning pages constantly and this is likely to mess up the ink. It also includes a few sticker tabs you can use to more easily find pages. I only ended up using two, but it does make getting between important parts of the book a lot easier. Stickers can easily be removed from the coded pages, but do have limited reusability due to the adhesive. As for the dice, they're fairly standard. They're engraved and clearly legible, and standard weight for their size. Before we wrap up, I do need to briefly mention the free companion app. It's completely optional, but will keep track of your character, ship, and all the equipment for each. It even automatically adjusts your stats according to your equipment, and you can automatically roll for a trait simply by clicking on the appropriate stat. I once again played up through April, this time using Durgle the Gobrant Smuggler to play through the calendar a second time, and the app made it very easy to keep track of everything. All I needed was the calendar itself and my phone. If you eschew the use of any electronic devices with your games, you'll obviously want to skip this as it does nothing your character sheet can't. But for those who don't mind, I actually find it easier to use than the book. Although I must admit, I do miss the satisfaction of laying down a sticker to show off my equipment. All in all, Void Spark Chronicles is a pretty interesting concept. Now obviously, since the game is presented as a calendar, you're not going to have any branching paths. But it does offer you choices which will have future consequences, some of which are short term, others which I've yet to feel the echoes of. The rules are fairly simple, but will also feel quite familiar to anyone who's familiar with the D20 system. And since I did do this twice, I can safely say that, yes, the different characters do actually play very differently from one another. From what I've seen so far, the story isn't a masterpiece, but it is fairly engaging, and there are clear plot threads that I can see starting to form. But at this point, I'll be waiting until May to get back into the game, or I'll be using it as intended as a daily calendar. I'll definitely be following along and finishing up both what I started as Jake and as Durgle. Although I may end up revising my score by the end of the year, I do feel as though I've seen enough of the game to give it a fair shake, and find the Void Spark Chronicles to be worthy a respectable 8.1 out of 10.
Quest Calendars 2023 The Void Spark Chronicles is available for purchase directly from Sundial Games via Backer Kit. Also of note is that they have announced they are officially working on the as of yet unnamed calendar for 2024, which will have a crowdfunding campaign launching in July. If you're interested in purchasing or learning more, links are included in the description. What about you? What do you think of the Void Spark Chronicles? What solo RPGs have you enjoyed? If you have any questions, remarks, or posing points of view, leave that in the comments down below. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell. And if you really enjoy my work, please consider funding my channel on Patreon. Until next time, farewell, fellow fanatics. Thank you again for watching. I have plenty more to share with you if you're interested. You can click up here above my head to subscribe to my channel. You can click over here on my monitor to see the most recent video that I've worked on. Or if you prefer, you can click up here to open this mysterious vault and see what video that the YouTube algorithm has picked just for you.